Hi, it's Darren Marlar, and if you are a Dropbox user, like Dropbox user that is, like I am, this little tip might come in handy for you. Uh, if you have to share files with clients, for example, I'm an audio uh, person, I do voiceovers for a living, so I'm sending audio files to clients quite a bit, and usually those files are going to be too large to email as an attachment, even if I knock those down to an MP3, because some of those projects are fairly big. So the easiest thing for me to do at that point is to send them a link so they can download it. And I usually do that through Dropbox. Well, Dropbox does have one thing. I love the program. I think it's a great service. But the one thing that irritates me is the fact that it takes every space in the title of what you're creating and uh, puts a percentage 20 in it. And it just makes for a really, really long title. Sometimes that's required. For example, uh, I am the uh, I'm the voice artist for Factsverse on YouTube. Just one of my, uh, just uh, one of my clients. And here, look at that. The the the, <laughs> the title is so long it doesn't even fit onto my Adobe Audition description of what that of what the title is. Well, the title of the uh, the file itself is. Let me. Uh, Knock this down here. Discard changes. There you go. 40 celebrities who confess to having secret crushes on other stars. That's a long title. So when I was recording it, uh, I went ahead and saved it under that title. And then I'll take a Dropbox link. Here's There it is on Dropbox. Uh, this is how I find it on Dropbox. You might uh, access your Dropbox files uh, in some other way. But regardless, you, you grab the link for whatever that file is. There it is. It gets copied. And when you sign, when you create a new email, what happens is you get this. Look at that mess. And you don't want to send that to a, a client for them to download something, but that's the name of the file. So you don't think you have a choice, right? Well, you do have a choice. Obviously, a lot of people have found out that they'll just use either bit.ly or tinyurl. I, I'll use tinyurl here just as an example. If I type in that really long, there you go. And so instead of this giant beast, I have this that I can share, which works just fine. All, all it does is it takes you, it forwards to this URL up here. But, the, but today I noticed that I can also, if I want to, just take this section and share that with my client. So instead of this monstrosity, all I can, all I'd have to do is send them this. And when I do, when you click on that, notice up here, it takes you to the very same file, the long, the long title file, but it's still the same file. 40 celebrities who confess to having secret crushes on their, uh, on, on other stars. Now, why would you do it this way? You could just use the tiny URL or whatever. That's fine. I have found, however, that some people, uh, especially in, in this technological age where everybody is trying to go fishing and, and the spam you with everything else, uh, there, you, you have to be so careful about what you click on. And sometimes if somebody sees a bit.ly or a, a tiny URL, uh, then they're going to think that maybe it's spam rather than what they're really hoping to get in the uh, you know in their email so tinyurl.com well who the heck is that i hired darren marler who is tinyurl well obviously they didn't hire dropbox but at least they know that i use dropbox to send my files to them so this is obviously of course if you're not using your own ftp and you know you, you're fancy enough to get your own url for that but for those of us who uh, don't use that particular method and we do use dropbox this might work for you let me know if it does in the comments or let me know if it doesn't. Like I said, it works for me. I just showed that to you, but maybe that won't work for everybody. I'm curious as to whether or not it works for you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.